All right, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Disco Elysium. I hope everyone is doing great today. I know I still am. So I am recording this again back to back for the past few episodes here. This will probably be the last one I do uh, for today. So about five, the first five episodes will be all in one sitting here. Um, so again, if you're leaving tips or suggestions down below, I'm not seeing them. Uh, until later on but uh, also for this game i don't know if i want tips and suggestions because i'm enjoying it going it, uh, into it i'm um, kind of blind and and just figuring it out as i go and thus far i am really enjoying this game it's definitely uh, you know putting the uh the brain juices to work you could say um and really making you think so i'm excited i i currently actually have the other episodes i, I took a break between the last episode and this one of, of recording um, and I moved some videos around and started uploading some stuff. So I'm super excited to get those out in this upcoming week. And I hope that you guys have been enjoying it. I'm excited to see what you guys think on this series as well. But anywho, that's enough talking. Let's just get back into our gameplay. So just to recap a little bit here. Uh, for one, if you haven't caught the other episodes, I would recommend going back and taking a watch through them. Uh, definitely will be more encapsul encapsulating right encompassing you'll get more details than what i'm going to share here i guess it would be the easiest way to say that uh but basically we are a, a detective for the 30 41st precinct in the game and we are on the case of a murder investigation uh we have a body hanging in a tree behind this um hostel i believe um, and we have a partner here with us, Kim. He's from the 57th Precinct, I believe. And uh, he's been super helpful thus far. But basically, we have woken up from a drunken weekend with no recollection of anything that occurred. Not doing our job in any way, shape, or form over that weekend period. And we have lost our badge and our gun. And we have been ridiculed by our department because of that. But we were honest with them. And we have definitely been judged by Kim here. Uh, because of our drunkenness and being hung over but he has been extremely accepting and helpful for it so and in the last episode we we did go through that and we were pretty much ridiculed by the the department and then we tried to take some ammonia to help us investigate the body a little bit more and unfortunately that didn't help us so we do not have a high enough i think physique in order to um get through investigating the body so we are currently trying to go through this uh mission here which is going to talk to other people uh for for about 30 minutes here and we don't have any percentage on it because we haven't actually done it yet we've just been kind of sitting around and doing other things so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to attempt to talk to people but we're also going to uh, look for our badge and for our gun because we do not know where those are at so let's talk to this person over here um i actually when i was moving videos around and getting stuff ready and prepping our description and whatnot i realized that it seems like this whole setting is relatively small and they cram just a bunch of stuff into it if i if i'm understanding and i was reading through things correctly so but anyway, let's talk to this person here just smoking a ciggy. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. Oh, I thought he was going to go more. Uh, the man mutters to himself, uh, assenting the beats as he goes. Accenting the beats as he goes. Or assent? I don't know. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. Fair enough. It's a nice little little humdinger right there. Keep listening. I am the law. What's going on here? Never mind. Leave. Uh, let's just keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. Huh. Well, that was very polite. Uh, very interesting. So he's rambling on about stuff, but he seems at least coherent enough to address us. Um, then what's going on here? It's the jam, my man. It's the jam, my man. He motions towards the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. Uh, I believe it's trucks, right? That's our nice uh, deviation between uh, Europe and uh, American, right? A lorry is like a truck. 
Uh, what's the jam? That's what it's I get. A traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike. Scabs agitating. An all around clusterfuck. Oh, nice. Okay, so there you go. There, there's a little bit of insight into the traffic jam that Kim was talking on before. Um, and this is it. It's just a huge traffic jam currently, which is crazy. Um, but okay. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. All right, this must be a very, very big backup because he looks, it says he looks down the road and there's probably hundreds and hundreds of more trucks that are lining this traffic jam. Limbo, hmm? So that's where I am. So how long have you been here? We're just cool and we leave. Uh, let's go with the second one here. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. The, of mazout? What? I am not 100% sure on that one. Uh, extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. Uh, I don't quite understand what you just said. Uh, could you say it again? Only a little less plotting. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. I mean, it makes sense. It feels like he's just been stuck here forever. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Wow, okay. A whole entire week that so this traffic me, jam. What do you need? Um, let's figure out more about this strike. I mean, what? He says it's been a week, right? And that actually lines up with about the time of the murder of our, of our mystery man in the tree. So let's get a little bit more details about the strike here. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks, workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. Um... I don't even know if he's going to know this. Some pretty wild stuff I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. All right. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Hmm. Okay. I feel like these two have to be interconnected in some way. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. Ooh. Okay, I don't think that's the lady that we met on the inside, but that's the other thing we have to do too, is we do need to go back and actually interrogate the store manager. I completely forgot about that, so we'll do it after we talk to Tommy Lee Home here. Uh, let's see, what do you think the company wants? I don't know who this is directed towards. Is it towards Kim or towards the guy? What do you think the company wants? I don't they want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. Fair enough. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Dang, it's already 10 o'clock on day one. I also accidentally did not hit escape on the game, and so it was running with the time clicking away, I believe. And I think the time goes quicker when you're in conversation, if I was reading correctly, when I paused it. Um, anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. That is kind of a dumb thing to say. All of us who? Obviously all these us people around drivers. here. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. He smiles awkwardly. Not you, though? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. Fair enough, my guy. He glances down the road towards the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. Mm. Empathy, uh, very low. What do you see in his eyes? Who is he asking that towards? This is a white check. You may retry it. Do we go for it? 17% chance. Ease into it. Bummer. Don't go too far. 
This seems like a personal matter. All right, fair enough. Okay. Man, I want to know about your soul. Hey, Tommy, spill the beans. What's troubling you? Uh, man, you look sad. What's going on with you? Yeah, let's not be too forward. Like our empathy said, we want to ease into it here. So let's uh, try to ease into it. I'm okay, man. Just the jams got me down. I feel the it, Tommy. Fumes, the chemical rainbows, the tarpaulin stretched on the frames and the dull engines off. The man recedes into his days of words. Maybe the full-on direct approach wasn't correct. Damn, it's tricky business looking into someone's eyes and not doing it wrong. I mean, I thought I thought we did relatively good around it, honestly. Uh, even though we didn't get the empathy checked off the first time, I thought the follow-up was pretty decent. I don't know. Doesn't seem like our empathy thought so, but, you know, who am I to judge, I guess? Um, all right, let's get into what our real reason is here for, is the dead man. He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. Wasting time keeping busy. I feel like those are two counterintuitive things there, but let's continue. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. I am kind of curious, busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Well, let's see what his conclusion is. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Ah, jeez, that's dark. All right, anyway, I think we're good. I don't really much care what he's hauling. I feel like he's a pretty genuine dude, and he's kind of helped us a little bit here, so let's... let's... Don't be a stranger. Don't be a stranger. Gives a salute with two fingers. Okay, what a genuine fellow, it seems like. All right, well, we do need to go back in and interview the store manager again, even though the store manager was kind of pissed at us. Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. I'm just more so curious as to what is around here. Obviously, we can easily go back inside, but um, we've already done that. So let's see how we do it. 33% actually on our volumetric uh, com compressor here, so... We'll get there soon enough. Let's uh, bop, bop out of this. Hit tab. What do we got here? We got some magazines. There's CDs. I'm guessing magazines. We have a trash can. We have that. And we have a dude here. Let's talk to this gentleman. Welcome to Ivashol. Oh, jeez. Just by the name, I'm not already vibing with this dude. Uh, announces the routed man. The remark isn't addressed to you. It's addressed to the lieutenant. Oh, geez. This isn't going to be a fun conversation at all. Welcome to announces the... Why are you dressing my partner like that? Hey, I know. <laughs> Never mind. Let's keep moving. I mean... I I don't even recall how the guy said it, but it didn't sound anything bad, but let's just keep moving. I don't really want to talk to this guy right now. Jump Jams, a popular, okay, music magazine. A glossy magazine, Able Body Men. This issue hosts a, hosts a top 10 list. Interesting, okay. Uh, let's check out this garbage. We have some magnesium, which I believe is good for our morale, right? So, ah, here we go. We are getting into the, um, getting into the strike here. What is this? Some money, 24 cents. Look at that, guys. We are almost up to a full dollar. That is pretty crazy right here. Um, we have a gentleman we can talk to right here in the middle. We do have a some kind of keg probably oh fuel they store booze ha knew it okay we got some more money back here is this gonna get us to a dollar oh yeah that got us to almost a dollar fifty boys look at us let us in okay so obviously they've closed everything let's talk to this gentleman here bastards we have a right to work the man yells towards the harbor gates, his voice the loudest of the lot, oddly screechy for a man his size. I was going to say, I feel like the voice doesn't really fit the character model here. 
Uh, what's going on here? It looks like too much trouble for my taste. I mean, uh, as much as I would like to go with number two, we'll go with number one. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than everybody else there. Or here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? Yes or no? Well, obviously we're not. And then, uh, I don't know. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Oh, then yes. Okay, then I'm thinking no. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Yeah, I got no quarrel with this guy. I don't know why I would come off so aggressive. Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Fair enough. Uh, what, kinds, what kind of cause are we talking about here? Um, I don't think I've chosen any sides yet. Uh, regardless, I have some questions for you, or per to proceed with some questions, or to back out of the conversation. We could obviously back out of the conversation. Um, I mean, honestly, I, don't, I, I mean, I haven't chosen a side here. I don't see why they wouldn't have the right to work, but I'm just kind of keep neutral on it. Um, let's see what kind of cause they're talking on here. It sounds, I mean, pretty straightforward, but some more details would be useful. Rights of people. Rights of workers to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. Okay. His manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Fair enough. So really, this guy is just going through the motions of this point. I believe this is probably one of the truck drivers, you know, telling us, hey, let us through because we, we should be able to work. Um, I mean, I don't want to get into it with choosing sides yet because I, I don't know the full story. I don't even want to talk on it. So let's just hit regardless. I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you. All right. We have families to feed, you piece of shit. Okay, I was like, why is he telling this to us? But no, he said, he points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. Okay. So do we, Scott. Wait, is this guy's name seriously? Call me Menyana? Seriously? Call me Morning? Okay, I'm very confused. Um... The loitering man hollers in return. Uh, I want to get into the harbor too. What is a strike? Who are all these strike breakers? Look around. What exactly is your goal here? I'm just going to leave now. Um, I mean, I don't. We kind of know what their goal is, right? They want to work. They want to get through. So we know their goal. Who are these strike breakers? I believe they're all well. I don't know, actually. Maybe we should get these... Maybe we should answer this question. Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. The man runs a hand through his steadily agreeing military cut. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work. So I'm a little bit confused if this gentleman is someone who is willing to work um, when other people are striking and not, or if these this is a uh, truck driver. I'm, I'm a little bit confused on that point. I have a question. Why do all these men follow your leadership? Good question, Kim. You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No. Probably. They follow the rules of the market, the rules of the economy, because they were... Given a job to do. All right, let's find out what exactly his goal is, because now I feel like the lines are a little bit blurred on what's going on here. We were promised work. We'd be in there working if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. OK, I'm guessing these are people who came to work at the harbor, not necessarily the truck drivers. 
And you're unable to breach the entrance? Okay, I want to discuss something else. Yeah. The physically impressive man tower has turned his attention back to the gates. He ignores your presence. All right. I'm good with it. I feel like we got a little bit of information out of him, but like honestly, like not a ton. Um, we can come up here, I guess, and see what's going on. It says G R I H. It's great to know. We do have some people up there. It looks like we can come up the sides and maybe go up that way. But uh, we do have, again, the ability to go back and interview the store, the cafeteria manager. And we do have some stuff this way. Look at this. There's a car here. A foreign car kept in good condition. Where's the, is the engine back there still, too? That's a very weird front end on that one. Um, doesn't look like we have much else back here. Ooh, we have some stuff here. We have something there, too. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We have a woman sitting back here, too. At least I think it's a woman. Ooh, look at that big baller, guys. We are almost up to $3. Hell yeah. Only took us five episodes to get to $3. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. Okay, the pale driver. It almost looks like from her image here that she's, like, smoking, maybe? Don't know. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. So probably looking back on some kind of memory, obviously in the photo. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... She's your grandma? How funny would that be? Snap your fingers in front of her face. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to ask some questions. We're nothing to do here. Let's uh, let's ask her some questions. I'm not going to say grandma. That's, I mean, kind of weird. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Do we snap our fingers? Do we, do we get to that point? Do we need to talk to her that bad? I'm going to go for it. Uh, no, let's just leave it. We can always come back and talk to her. I don't want to get into a bad spot with her. I literally have no other reason to talk with her right now. What do we got here? More monies? Oh, a weight tank top. Look at that, boys. Let's take a peek. What is this? Horseback monument. This is actually pretty cool looking. If I do say so myself. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing towards the sea. It looks as if it's been resembled, pe reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Yeah, it does kind of look that way. It's looking pretty rough, not going to lie. Who is this? Horseback Monument. A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Felipe III, the squanderer and the greatest of the Philippine kings uh, of Revel." Revacol? I'm gonna mispronounce it every time. Uh, son of blah 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 blah. Okay, okay. What did this king do? Even odds? Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. In what ways? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Rivershaw. Rivershaw. That's how you pronounce it. Oh, well, that's pretty bad. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Awesome. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. That's some, um, uh, Scrooge McDuck stuff right there. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, instead of a bed. Oh my like god. A person. Yeah, that's definitely some Scrooge McDuck. Uh, I would like to sleep on gold, hustler style. All right. The king is the king, and he can do anything wait really there's no way that's true a deplorable farce no wonder everything went to crap 
I mean, yeah. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. Jeez, everyone in this game is just like rough. Like, I feel like Kim here is like the most wholesome one in the whole entire game thus far. Everybody else is like just the in chaos. Definitely gives good like char character, um, well-rounded characters, I should say. Um, the what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. Which is definitely something you should not do. Uh, okay, what is nose candy? Okay. Uh, this is a lot to process. So he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggie. Okay, where is he buried now? I don't know why we would care about where he's buried now. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's pretty much confirming it. That's what the revolutionary said. 150 years later, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. Ah, so he did not get a very great uh, burial. I mean, it, I mean, what? It remains in the bay, so that's where it is, right? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian yeah. Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. Makes sense. Then it kind of makes sense that the statue's this way. The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. I would have loved to play a game during that time. That sounds interesting. That almost sounds like some um, Bioshock Infinite type type things right there with like a revolution and, and such. Most historians think the Coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the Communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. Then who restored this monument? If they did not like this um, ruler that much, who would have put the time and effort back into it to restore it to some kind of... some kind of statue? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Revachol in the poorest part of the city. It is a little bit ironic. Okay, I gave it to him. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. Okay. I mean, I get it. It is very artistic, I guess, in that sense. Um, such a bad idea. I really don't get art. Nah, I think it's brilliant. I think it's a good... I don't think it's that funny, but I don't really have much of a choice. I can't just say it's brilliant, so... People in Martinez tend to disagree, <clears throat> as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. I mean... Okay. I mean, but isn't that the point of art? Is to be interpreted whichever way you want it to be interpreted? That's what I always thought was funny. Like, you have art critics, right? Who judge art, obviously. That's the name. Um, and I feel like more often than not, they put a hard definition to specific artworks. But I thought that was the whole point of art in general, is to be... Uh, for the viewer to view it in the way that they feel like they can understand it. You know, like the, the artist might have it in one interpretation while you or I might have it in a different way. So that's why it always kind of confused me that such hard definitions would be put to a lot of things. I mean, obviously, for for certain pieces of art, if they're extremely straightforward, you know, uh, like okay maybe maybe it isn't too there isn't too much interpretation that can be done around it but still i thought that was the whole idea behind it and they have a good explanation around this one so i don't see i don't see why most people don't like it but hey whatever philip the third the squanderer however with his bronze face up in the air doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death Fair enough, but we got experience, so I'm good Not with that. Not that he ever did in life either. Not that he ever did in life 
either. Okay, well, we're good. Let's leave. Auto saving. Head itches. Good to go. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we are going to get to talking to the cafeteria manager today. We do have something here, though. A bold slogan, Humanox, covers the truck. And I think this is a dead end over here, maybe. Or no, can we go this way? We can. Ruins are full of snow. No one lives here anymore. Is there anything for us to view over here? Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's a dead end. I think we've run out of options. We could talk to this lady, but that's about it. I don't think we can go this way. Can we? Nope, that's a big negatory. That's everything over here. Um, like I said, we could still talk to her, but I want to leave it open just in case there's like a reason to talk to her. Right now, we don't have a reason. We have all these people here. We do have a store here as well, which we might go into this store, but we also have to go back and interview the cafeteria manager, like I said. So, but anyways, guys, we are at the 30 minute mark, so we're going to wrap up the episode there. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If you guys did like this episode, definitely leave a like down below. Let's me know to keep posting these. I'm going to keep recording them for the time being. Um, but uh, we might just obviously do enough recordings, put them out there. If it's not doing well, then we might stop. But we'll, we'll just see how it goes anyway. Um, but if you are new here and you do enjoy these and you do want to follow along, definitely hit that subscribe button and bell notification. It'll let you know every single time I post a new episode here to the channel. I do stream over on Twitch on Mondays and Fridays at about 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're ever interested in catching a live stream, the link is in the description down below for that. We also have a link down there to the community Discord. Our community is ever growing. Um, and so we have a Discord set up for anyone who would like to join. Um, obviously, be respectful if you do feel like joining in, uh, but it's a cool place to hang out, uh, share your experiences with gaming, um, share uh, any of your Minecraft creations, ask questions, and just overall have a good time. I try to hang out there a decent amount, and I do post updates for the channel and Twitch over there as well, so you can always keep up to date over there. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it so very much, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take it easy.